Welcome back. Now let's look at the integer data type at length. Let's look at a simple integer. The variable name, let's call the variable name as x. And, uh, it has a value of, let's say, 3. So internally within the computer, the computer stores everything only as binary. So internally for the computer, the 3 would look at as uh, something like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? These are the computer stores internally. So 3, I mean, the binary for 3 is this, right? So this is the view of the binary. The first digit on the left is the sign bit and the remaining bits are there. So the when the sign is 1, it's a negative number. When the sign is 0, it's a positive number. So this is 101 is binary 5. I think this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, and this is 5. This is how the binary numbers are stored. Again, when the sign bit is negative, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. So this is the other way to look at it. Um, all the bits, 16 bits, um, the sign bit is 1, indicating that it's a negative number. And the remaining 15 bits are also 1, indicating that it is minus 3, 2, 7, 6, 7. So this is how an integer is internally stored. As we saw earlier, an integer can be 2 bytes or 4 bytes, depending on the compiler. right? So the compiler could be a 32-bit compiler or a 64-bit compiler. Depending on that, the size of integer is determined in C. So it is not a constant 2 byte or 4 byte like the way it is in Java. In C, it depends on the architecture. The size of integer is dependent on the architecture and the compiler that is chosen. Now let's come back to Python Tutor and let's look at two integer variables. So the variables, when you have more than one variable, you can either declare them in separate lines like this, integer x, integer y, or you can club them saying that this is integer x and this is integer y. So two integers are here. You can declare any number of integers um, like this. So when the integer variable is not initialized, by default, there will be junk value in the integer. You can initialize of any variable that you want directly here to any value, right? If it's not initialized, it will have a junk value. If it is initialized, it will carry the value that has been given to the integer. So every integer variable has an associated memory address. So here I'm assuming a two byte for integer. So FFFF00 is the address where the variable i is there, where we can store any value. So FFFF02 is the second variable, integer variable, which has its address, base address there. And it's a two byte integer at address 02 and 03 for two bytes. Variable name is J and the value that is stored in binary is uh, 010, which represents two. So these are two variables for which memory has been assigned. And this is how it looks like. So you can visualize this like a house. Uh, every house has an address. So what is the content within that address or what is there within the home is up to the builder to decide. But every house has a unique address. It's very similar to that. Every integer or character for that matter, any variable has an address associated with it. We saw a basic integer. So integer has different qualifications. For example, integer can be signed or unsigned. By default, as we saw earlier, it is every integer is a signed integer. That means the number can be positive or negative. Um, there are certain instances where the value of uh, a negative value might not be applicable for certain integers. So in those cases, you can declare the variable as an unsigned integer. For example, an age. Age will never be negative. So you can declare that variable as an unsigned integer so that it carries only unsigned values that is positive values um, in certain cases we might not need for example default integer in a 64-bit compiler is uh, four bytes sometimes we might not need four bytes we might look at only two bytes in those cases you can say short int right it will allocate only two bytes for it in some cases you might need eight bytes 
uh, to store a very large value. For example, uh, the distance from, uh, I mean, from home to sun, right? Uh, it's a huge one. So it might be better off storing long integers, using long integers to show that. We will show some examples of how to use that in a program. So let's look at this in Python tutor. Int x is equal to 4. Unsigned int y is equal to um, 100. Uh, long int z equal to a long number. And a short int s is equal to Okay, so these are four different types of integers. So signed integer can store a negative or a positive value. A long integer again can store a negative large or a positive large value. Right? This is how it works. Let's try to look at this now. So there are four variables declared. Integer, unsigned integer, long and short. So integer has a minus four. It can store a negative or a positive number. Unsigned integer can store only positive numbers. It cannot store negative numbers. Long int by default can store very large numbers. Um, you can see that it's a huge number that can be stored in long integer. Again, it can be positive or negative. A short integer is used when, I mean, when only when small numbers are stored. So for typically for an integer, four bytes are allocated. For a long int, eight bytes are allocated. For a short int, two bytes are allocated. So that's how the compiler assigns or allocates uh, memory for these data types. Now let's write a program to read an uh, integer value from the user and display the integer value. So I'll have a variable called i. Again, I'm using online GDB here. Scanf does not work with Python tutor. So whenever you're using Scanf, uh, make sure you're using online GDB or Turbo C. So to read a value from the user, this is the way it has to be done. And let me run this program. So it's waiting for an input from the user. I'm entering a value of four. It's displayed four. So we will look at this program very shortly in greater detail. Right? So scanf is used to read a value from the user. It's a library function, which is already there in stdio.h. This percentage D is called a format specifier. So percentage D is used for integer. D is used for integer. C is used for character. F is used for floating point. G is used for double. So percentage D means it can read a character. Ampersand is to denote the address. So it will store the value in the address of I. So for example, I has an address of 0x ff ff00. So in that address, if we have to store a value, then ampersand I is used to denote the address. Printf is to print the value, whatever is there in a memory location in I, if it has to be printed, then you use printf. Again, the format specifier remains the same and you use I. So when this program compiles and executes, it will start here. It will wait for an input from the user. So I entered four as the value. It read that value stored in the variable i. And when I asked it to display, it took the value from i and then printed. So scanf requires an ampersand. Printf doesn't require an ampersand. We look at this in a later chapter as to why it is the case. For now, just remember that scanf uses the ampersand. Always scanf uses ampersand because it has to store that value in an address. Printf does not use an ampersand. It is just going to display the value. So that's the quick summary of it. So assuming two bytes for an integer, the maximum value that can be showed is stored in an integer is 32767. And the minimum value is minus 32768. Um, so in the latest compilers, integer is four bytes. So two power 31, a very huge number can be stored in a normal integer. In an unsigned integer, the format specifier, if you notice, it's percentage U, not percentage D. 0 to 65535, um, assuming a two byte integer, it can store this. Short int is percentage H. Again, assuming two bytes for a short int, it's minus 32767 to plus 32767, or sorry, minus 32768 
to plus 3 to 7, 6, 7 for a short end. Unsigned short end is 0 to 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. For long integer, you see this huge number. In latest computers, actually, this is the number which is default integer itself. Finally, unsigned long end, 0 to 2 power 32, which is this number, 2 power 32 minus 1, which is this huge number. So these are the minimum and maximum values uh, which can be stored. By default, you can use a easy uh, integer itself to store most of your values. You will not hit an exception. So in your computer, for your compiler, if you want to find out what is the size of integer, right? How many bytes have been allocated for an integer? Use this size of and give an int, right? In this computer, it is four bytes, right? So you can check up in your computer how many bytes has been allocated for an integer.